You see, the Bible says that sin is a form of insanity. If our gospel be veiled, the veil must be in the minds of those who are spiritually dying. There was a film many years ago that said it's a mad, mad world, and it certainly is. But in the meantime, while all this is taking place in the far country and a long way off, let's go back to the farm and see what's happening to the father. The father, every evening when he comes home from work, sits on the front porch and looks down the road and prays for his son, that his son might come home someday. The loving father. And that's the picture of God. That's the picture of heaven, waiting for you to come home, for you to return. But the young man made up a speech in the far country, he made up a speech. He said, I'll go. He said, my father's servants are far better off than I am. I'll go. I'm no longer worthy to be his son. I'll go and tell him I want a job as a servant from now on. I won't even claim to be your son. I've sinned away that opportunity. He said, I will arise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before thee. Notice he said, I will. I've sinned against heaven. It wasn't just a sin against the father and against himself. He had sinned against God and he was ready to acknowledge it. We sometimes hear and read of don't care parents and parent apathy toward children. But here was a father who couldn't have cared more. There was a top tune that said, show me the way home. B.J. Thomas used to sing, home is where I belong. Yes, Thomas Wolfe wrote a book and said, you can't go home again, but you can go home again. There's an old hymn that says softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, come home. The Bible says in Isaiah 55, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Father and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. In Hosea it says, come and let us return unto the Lord for he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. So what happened? The father one day was looking down the road. It was just at sunset, and he saw someone staggering down the road in old, dirty, filthy clothes. And he said, that looks like Jim, but it couldn't be. Then he watched as the figure came closer and closer, and then he said, it is Jim. It is my son. And he ran to meet him. And the son saw his father coming. And he got his speech out that he had made. I've sinned against heaven and sinned against you, and I know. But he didn't get the speech finished. He never did get to the part that said, I want a job as one of your servants. The father flung his arms around him. And the tears mingled with the tears of his lost son. And he welcomed him home. And they rejoiced together. And he ordered his servants to bring shoes to put on him and a ring signifying that he was accepted back as a son. And then he said, get the finest clothes you have and put on him. And then kill the fatted calf, invite the neighbors in, make merry. My son that was lost has returned. And they rejoiced. God the Father is waiting for you to come home. He loved you so much that he gave his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross, to die just for you. If you had been the only person in the whole world that was lost, he would have sent his son to die for you. And when Christ hung there on that cross, he hung there for you because God took your sins and laid them on Christ, and Christ became sin for us who knew no sin. He actually became sin. He could have come down from the cross. He could have flung that whole crowd out of the way. He could have taken up the rulership of the world at that moment, but he was looking at you generations later. And he stayed there on the cross for you and for me. And he says from the cross, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I want to help you. I want to come into your life and change your life. 
and give you a reason for living. I want to give you eternal life. I want to give you eternal life right tonight. And he'll do it tonight. How many times we've seen in crusades or in meetings like this when we give the appeal for clergymen to come forward to receive Christ. Sunday school teachers, leaders in the church that are not sure of their relationship to Christ. And there are many people here tonight that do go to church and you do believe in your heart and mind in a sense, but you've never really received him as yours. He doesn't walk with you every day and he's not in your heart. And you don't long to read his word and pray and fellowship with him. Now, if you come tonight, if you've been away from him or never come to him, he has his arms wide open for you and he says, come. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, come home. Will you come home tonight? I'm going to ask you to do something tonight that we've seen over 4,500 people already do in these two days. But you see, this, the story doesn't end where I've just ended it. It ends with another prodigal, another son. The oldest son is out in the fields working, the elder brother, and he was angry. He had been with the father all the time, in the church all the time but angry that his father was receiving this lost son back with such honor and giving a party for him. The elder brother had been there all the time, but he was rebellious in his heart. And there are many people just like that. Do you know Christ? Are you sure of it? If there's a doubt in your mind or heart, I'm going to ask you to do this tonight. I'm going to ask you to get up out of your seat and come and stand in front of this platform quietly and reverently and say by coming symbolically, I need Christ, I want Christ, I want him to change my life. If you're with friends and relatives, they'll wait. If you've come in a coach, they'll wait. You can bring your friend with you or several friends together can come but you come. You say, well, Billy, why do you ask people to come publicly? Do you know why? Because every person Jesus called in the Bible, he called publicly. He hung on the cross openly and publicly, naked and bleeding for you in front of a howling mob. Certainly you can come in this beautiful stadium and say yes to Christ publicly. And after you've all come, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to say a word to you, have a prayer with you, give you some literature, say a word to you, then you can go back and join your friends. They'll wait. Just that simple little decision. As I said yesterday, when you get immunized for polio, which is such a tremendous thing, so that you don't get that crippling disease. All you do is take a little wafer with a couple drops on it. So simple, but it affects your whole life. So simple to come and make a commitment to Christ, but it affects your whole life. He forgives all your sin. He gives you eternal life. He gives you a purpose and a reason for life here and now, and he gives you heaven to come so that you can know if you died at this moment where you're going.